In this video, I'm going to be exploring a topic that is fundamental to mathematics, and that is proofs. Now, I remember when I first learned about proofs and I was in the classroom and I went away and thought just how beautiful mathematics really was. And that's why I decided to make this video and some future videos on this on my channel, just to hopefully instill that passion and enthusiasm within you about mathematics. So just to note, this video is self-contained. You don't need any prerequisites. And the idea is that I'm going to make a series on my channel where all of the modules and all of the videos will be self-contained. So you can kind of pick them up as and when uh, and learn with me because I absolutely love maths and hopefully I can yeah, teach you something new. Now, for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Ellie and I am a mathematics graduate from the University of Cambridge. And I use this channel to nerd out about mathematics. So if you're interested in any of that, then subscribe down below. But without further ado, I'm going to dive straight in and start talking about proofs. Okay, fantastic. So proofs, that's the first topic. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about like a definition and the motivation behind why we want to prove things in the first place. So let's start with a definition. So I'm going to say that a proof is a logical statement, a logical argument, should I say. So logical argument that establishes a conclusion. So an example of this is, let's say I wanted to say, okay, there are infinitely many primes in the world, in the world, in mathematics. And what you could do is you could basically formulate a logical argument that would establish a conclusion to show that, you know, there are infinitely many. And that's what this kind of definition means. It's, it's basically saying that you can, you can have an argument to, to establish something. And the thing that you're establishing is the thing that you kind of set up to begin with. So the whole point of there are infinitely many prime numbers, let's say. But then I guess the next question is, well, why do we want to do this? What's the purpose of it? And I'm just going to write down. So there, there are two kind of main reasons why we want to prove things in the first place. The first is that we want to be sure that they are true. So if we say there are infinitely many, infinitely many prime numbers or that the sky is blue, then we want to be sure that what we are saying is true. So the first point is, well, we need to be sure that they are true. Now, the next thing which kind of falls on from this is, well, not only do we want to be sure that they're true, but we want to understand why they're true. Why is it that the sky is blue? Why is it that there are infinitely many? We want to understand why it is that this statement or whatever it is that we're trying to prove is actually true. Or it could be false as well. You know, proving things doesn't always mean you need to show that it's true. You can also show that it's false and that there aren't infinitely many primes, let's say, but of course we, we know that there are. So it kind of makes sense to that. So the next point is to understand uh, why they are true. So this first point here, to be sure that they are true, this helps us trust a result. So if we say that there are infinitely many primes, we can trust that that is true. Now, this next part, like I said, it kind of helps us understand the structure behind a result. So it helps kind of understand the deeper connections of why something is true or false. And for me, I think that's where the beautiful mathematics comes in because you're like, I know this thing is true, but what is the mathematics that makes it true? What is the mathematics that means that we, we can trust this result? And, and again, that's the kind of math that I find the most beautiful. So we have these kind of, this, this rough definition of, of a proof, but what I wanna do is I wanna show you kind of different examples of proofs and what might classify as a proof and what might not. So 1.2, we're on understanding valid proofs. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a claim. And this is, this is often how proofs are set up. You often say, well, here is my claim. So for us, we could have said the claim was there are infinitely many prime numbers or the claim is that the sky is blue. Again, the sky, the sky is blue is more of a physics, I guess. You, you could use some physics to explain why that is. Um, less so in mathematics, but I'm trying to show you you know, what it's, what it's synonymous with, essentially. So our claim is going to be that for any positive integer, we have that n squared minus n is even. Okay. So typically you have your, your claim 
and then you start by form formalizing your proof. You might be tempted <laughs> to start by saying, well, okay, well, let's have if n is one, we know that n squared minus n, that's zero. So that's even. You could say, well, if n is two, you'd have, again, n squared minus n, that would be four minus two, which is two, which is even. And you could say, well, let's do n, e n equals three, n squared minus n, so that would be nine, three squared would be nine, minus three would be six, and therefore that's even. And <laughs> you could, you know, if you really wanted to write this out for infinity and say all of these are even um, if you really wanted to. But as things stand here, this is not how you would prove something. So just because something, you know, the, the claim itself works for a specific number or a specific variable. So for here, we, we substitute in an n value and said, well, it's true for the first three. You cannot, and this is probably quite intuitive, but you cannot just say, well, I've, I've shown that it's true for these three or this n number of, of cases. So therefore it must be true for all n. That's not true. And so I'm just gonna write here in case people are taking notes. Since it works for the first few integers, n squared minus n, must be even. Now what I'm writing down here is I'm writing down a, a a proof which is not a proper proof and I'll you know I'll write some extra words here but um is even for all integers. So this is what you know you might be tempted to say. And then you'd put a little box here to say therefore you know QED I've proved it and that's what the, this little box means it means I've I've completed the proof. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a big <laughs> I'm gonna put a big cross in here and say that this is not a proof. And again, this, this is, you know, an introduction, an introduction to proofs. You might already guess, well, of course, that's, that's the case, of course. But it's kind of these little things that you don't really notice so much. And I think when you, you do proofs, you need to remember the global scale of things. Now, obviously, we've only checked a few cases um, and it's not a proof. And I'll just put, because a valid proof must cover all cases. We, we can't do this, so we can't just say, well, it, it's true for three different n values, so therefore it's true for all. What can we actually do here? Well, we can rewrite this, so let's, let's, let's kind of copy the claim again and start our proof again. But this time we're going to consider all of the possible cases. And this is the really important thing with proofs is sometimes you can formulate a proof and it can be very sophisticated and beautiful but there are certain times where you might have not actually covered all of the cases and so the proof itself would be incomplete. So let's take a look at what you might be tempted to do here. So we can say, well, our proof. So let's say given some positive integer n, we can write this. So we factorize this, we can say, well, n squared minus n is actually just n multiplied by n minus one. And then what we could say is we could say, well, since n minus one and n are consecutive integers, well, one of them must be even. Because obviously if you have one, two, three, four, five, if you have the consecutives, of course, one of them is going to be even. So the product is always even. And therefore, let's zoom in slightly, n squared minus n is even. Put a little box to say, oh, we've proved it. So this is a really beautiful way that you might construct everything. And what we can do now with this is we can look at, well, what did we do well? And what did we do incorrectly? What, what can we improve on with this proof to make it so watertight that it is an actual proof? Well, something that we did really well we said it's positive integer n. Now this is really important because instead of just saying, well, n is one, two, three, like we did previously, we're grouping n into what it was defined in the claim itself. So for positive integer n, and we've mentioned positive integer n. So it's really important that whatever is formulated in the claim, you then refer to in the proof. Okay. Now, another thing that was really nice that we did was kind of use a really nice property of 
numbers, I guess, <laughs> uh, to rewrite this. And this is, this is really nice. It's, it's really helpful in proofs. And I think as we go through and, and learn a bit more about proofs, you'll understand that there are often little little tricks that you can take to simplify things down and then that helps you with the proof itself. Um, yeah, and, and it kind of makes the maths a lot more beautiful. So that was really, really nice. So where did we fall down with this proof? Well, we said that we can rewrite this, you know, consecutive integers like this. And therefore we said, well, if they are consecutive integers, then one of them must be even. Now that's, it might seem intuitive, but it's something that you actually need to prove when, when you're doing a proof. So we need to prove that actually two consecutive integers, there is an even number there. And also we kind of need to prove as well that the product of an even and an odd number is always even. Now you might think this seems a bit overkill, but this is where you kind of get into the beauty of mathematics and being able to say, well, here is something that I want to prove and I'm going to show you every single step to, to show you that that is the case. And what we'll do is we'll use what we've learned from the proofs, you know, this, this incorrect proof and this incorrect proof to formulate a really nice proof to, to the claim uh, and tie all of this together. So let's do as we did before and copy the claim. And now we're going to formulate a really, really nice proof for this. Now I'll just put here, again, cross, and I'll just say, and hopefully you know what I mean by that. So, okay, now let's get this, this really beautiful proof up. So we're going to say that the proof is, so we're going to start similar to what we did before. We'll start again with that because that was a really good start point, like I mentioned. Okay, now what we'll say is we'll say by definition, so by definition, an integer is even if it can be written as 2k for some integer k and odd if it can be written as 2k plus 1 for some integer k. Now this is the, the formal definition of uh, even and odd numbers. So what we can say from here is so for a positive integer n, we know that if n is even, that is we have n is 2k, well we know that n minus 1 that must be odd. And the reason for that is because you could simply just substitute 2k into here. So you could have 2k minus 1. Well, if you added a 2, you'd end up with 2, well, k plus 1 plus 1. We know that this is even and adding 1 is odd. So therefore, it's odd. And again, we can do the same thing for odd. So if n is odd, so n is 2k plus 1, then n is even. Perfect. Okay, so in both of these cases, where if n was odd or n is even, we know that therefore n multiplied by n minus 1 is an odd multiplied by an even. So we're going to write that down. So uh, using this, so in both cases, 1 of n or n minus 1, well, that must be even. Okay. So we've got to the point where we said that n or n minus 1, they must be even. Now let's talk about how if you multiply them together, we're going to get an even. We can, we can prove that. So we can say using this, we can say that n multiplied by n minus 1 is odd multiplied by an even. Okay, which is what we just said. But what we can do now again is we can say, well, if this is the case, so let's have an even number. So let's have P equals 2K. So let P equals 2K be even. And let's have Q equals 2K plus one is odd. Then if we had obviously P multiplied by Q, that would be 2k multiplied by 2k plus 1. Okay, what is this? Well, this is 
2 all multiplied by k. So we're taking out the factor of 2. So we have 2 multiplied by k multiplied by 2k plus 1. Now this in here, that's just an integer. And we're multiplying by 2. So therefore, p multiplied by q must therefore be even. So we can say that. So we can say which is a multiple of 2 and therefore even. Okay, perfect. So since we have the, so we can say thus, since 1, 1 of n or n minus 1 is even, their product n multiplied by n minus 1 must be even. So therefore, n squared minus n is even for all integers n. Okay, fabulous. And we can do a little square there to say that we've proved it. So this is kind of what I was on about in terms of, I guess, expanding things out a little bit more. You know, we, we, we kind of blindly said up here that, well, therefore we know that it must be even and the product is always even. But what we've shown is we've, we've, we've started with the definition of what it is for a, a number to be uh, even, so 2k, and for a number to be odd, which is 2k plus 1. And then we've used both of those statements to deduce what we we've argued. We've argued we've argued that one after the other must therefore be they must be consecutive and that the product must be even. And then using all of that, we've been able to deduce that yeah, the, the claim is true and that and that's the proof there. So I I yeah, I really like this method of kind of stripping things down, to kind of bare bones, you know, what the definition of an odd and even is and then building a proof from that. And I think it's, you know, I think it's really beautiful. And there are some really nice proofs that we can do that, which might seem a little bit more exciting than just proving that n squared minus n is even. Um, like you'll see soon, the square root of two, the, the kind of how you can show that's irrational using some similar proofs to this. So now you've seen what it takes to formulate a proof there's still quite a lot left to cover, and that's what I'm gonna be covering in the next video. I'm gonna be talking about how you can actually disprove things by using a really nice method called proof by contradiction and covering some other really nice maths as well. So make sure you tune into the next video and thank you so much for watching.